Hey, folks, do you have your ID? That's right, Tracker's ID from the fine folks at Longsburg Tracking and Outfitting. Tracker's ID is the first whitetail interdigital bottled scent made specifically for training tracking dogs. A few drops goes a long way. Train your pups the way the professionals at Longsburg train. Look for them today on Facebook. Just look up Longsburg Tracking and Outfitting and shoot them a message or contact them today at 304-439-1659. guys welcome to another episode of on the limb podcast with nature's voice game calls man you can tell we're setting back up from <laughs> being out of the studio yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely well yeah i was like wait a second we don't have a power cable on that yeah we didn't have a power cable on our <laughs> thing that goes to our headphones i'm like i can't hear myself i can't hear myself <laughs> anyways you'll have that when you do these live podcasts yeah sometimes so back in the studio here we are I had an awesome live podcast up at 1010 Bridge Road there at the 1010 Bridge Restaurant. Oh, yeah. With Chef Paul Smith. Yeah. That was an amazing time. Did you all have a good time? Absolutely. That was Oh, uh, my gosh. Absolutely. That, ridiculous. That was a great time. The <laughs> food, the conversation, it was just all awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great company, the great food. The atmosphere of that place, man, is phenomenal. It sure is. They they really got a nice place going there. I mean, it's, it's just a good place to be. Yeah. So, uh, if you all don't know, Chef Paul Smith was the 2024 James Beard Best of the Southeast Chef Award here in West Virginia. So, that's the whole southeastern part of the U.S. and little old West Virginia has the best chef. That's, right. that's one of the biggest things that we was talking about. You know, like some of the things that's happening here in West Virginia is going on a national level, and that's where he's at. So... But anyways, uh, if you haven't tried it, you need to go check them out. You will not be disappointed for no, sure. No, you will not. Not so, at all. Uh, we're going to be talking archery again this evening. We're going to be talking traditional archery. Uh, I've been shooting my bow. I hope I can get out this year and archery hunt a little bit. been shooting my new Warhead arrows, and I'm telling you, they're spot on. I mean, they, they are nice. Nice. So one thing I really like about these arrows, Dan's got some. He's getting his cut next weekend. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, next weekend. <laughs> yeah. The 17th, that's when you're going to be back in. Yeah, I and, had to think of what day it was. Yeah. But, um, so the the front of center on these things is really good. So that really helps with impact. And they've got a little sleeve that you put on the end of these arrows, you know, and then you put your field point in or you put your broadhead in that. So it's like a little spacer, but it's uh, okay. it allows it to be just a little heavier on the end. That uh, makes sense. Okay. So yeah, it, it, the impact is is increased mm-hmm. tremendously in Would, on mine. I'm yeah. almost shooting through my target. Yeah, they're coming out the back of the target. I, I mean, at least I'd say sixteen, eighteen inches. Yeah, every bit of it. So, I mean, they'll do that when you're shooting from 10 yards, you know. Well, you know, I didn't want to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta, hey, wait a second. I, I heard our guest chuckle. <laughs> or if you're standing there and you, like, jab it really hard with your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and then take pictures. Yeah. Why are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> I'm just, I don't oh, know. Lord. Oh, guys, don't forget, hey, uh, be sure to check out episodes 110 and 111, Forks of the Robinson Hunting Club and Stick Tamer with Cord Burns. They're out now on all our major networks. Uh, be sure to head over to our Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts to listen to those episodes and any of them that you haven't got or need to catch up on. Uh, don't forget to check out OutdoorProShop.com and, you pod- and use Podcast 10, AppressionSense.com, On the Limb, and Nature's Voice Game Calls dot com uh, podcast fifteen at checkout to get all those great uh, discounts from those phenomenal sites. Uh, I mean, if you ain't been on Outdoor Pro Shop, there's just an absolute plethora of gear. 
it's, it would take you all day to literally look at the whole site, man. It's it's insane. It's amazing the stuff that they've got on there. I mean, they've they put a lot of work into that website. Yeah, and he's, yeah, especially, I mean, he's coming out doing the cans now, suppressors, you know, and he's got, uh, yeah. I, I was talking to him not long ago, they're working on doing uh, uh, FF or FFL Trusts. So yep. you'll be able to do a trust through them here soon, if not already. Yeah, I think you can already do that now. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good thing. All right, well, uh, be sure to check us out on all of those that Dan mentioned there. And uh, like I said, we got traditional archery this evening. So without further ado, please welcome with me Andrew Kimball, the owner of Wolf Paul Archery. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing well. How you guys doing this evening? Oh, man, we're doing great. <laughs> great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem, buddy. Yeah, we appreciate you coming out. So, yes, sir. So Dan wasn't with us there in Morgantown when we met you for the first time, but that was uh, last year. Well, that was this year, actually, at the show. And, uh, yeah, okay. You know, we got, to, we got to talking there a little bit. So uh, tell us a little bit about Wolf Hall Archery. Okay. Yeah, Wolf Hall started uh, as a project a little bit, you know, back in uh, the early 2000s. Uh, when I was still an executive chef and managing um, a restaurant down in Baltimore. Um, oh. At the time, I was switching from, you know, as an avid compound hunter, having shot so many deer, I wanted to, a new challenge. Um, I did I did buy some traditional bows, a couple of high-end ones from back then. There were a handful of maybe 10 or 12 really popular bowyers in America. Uh, wasn't like, like today uh, with Facebook and uh, everybody building bows. Um, so, you know, there wasn't really anything I liked there. I was building primitive bows already from solid state trees, uh, local trees on the farm I was living at in Harper County, Maryland. Um, hickory, sassafras, black locust. Um, and so, you know, these, these bows, <clears throat> everything they talked about and in the books and this and that, and I just couldn't seem to find it and I didn't want to spend any more money. So it became a project. Uh, as an itinerary goal for the the restaurant I was working for, we had it, it was a, a privately backed restaurant uh, by the Clarion Corporation. It was kind of a fancy deal, um, so we had this corporate structure that made us do quarterly itinerary goals. You know, that quarter we had three goals for the restaurant and our employees, and also three personal goals that we had to put in writing <laughs> and call in on Zoom meeting. So oh, back wow. then in 2000. <laughs> In 2007, in Zoom meetings, you, there was no screen or nothing. You know, bee, 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 bee. you call in and wait for, <laughs> yeah. you know, nice. you wait for court. Yeah, you wait for corporate to get on the phone, and we're all piled in the office. All the managers are piled in the office, and you know, we got pre- present our pitch. Of course, they've already had it already because we had to submit it like a week or two before for them to go over things and yay or nay it. You know, yeah. <laughs> so that's what it became. Um, there was at the time, um, from what I could see, I had only been to a tr- one traditional event, and uh, all the catalogs and everywhere else, all, all the bows were pretty well built the same. Um, you know, they were uh, recurve was two tapers, uh, which taper out towards the limb tip from the lip, from the butts at the you know riser where it fades out, and then uh, two pieces of glass. Um, you could hold all those bows up next to each other, and they would have the same profile except they just had different handle grips. So there was just like today, there was a lot of going on where, you know, bow copies were used or, you know, copied or designed, uh, sure. whatever, everybody did the same thing. Um, so I was building bows. Then after that project, I, I started my first laminated bow and, uh, kind of named, named, named the company, uh, you know, during that little thing I had to submit. So I called it Wolf Paul Archery. And um, that that came from here up in Western Maryland. And we have relatives on my dad's side here that ever since I was little, they called me Wolfie. So I just thought, well, Wolf Bull sounds pretty cool, so I'll do that. <laughs> and then uh, the, fir- the first bow was the Alpha Hybrid, um, which I called a hybrid because uh, I, I put up to seven, seven to nine layers in the limbs. Uh, I made really short bows uh, that accepted really long draw lengths. And, you know, I was popped up at my first traditional event after selling bows for five years um, out of a big uh, local archery store in Hartford County that was at the time when the, they sold the most Hoyt bows on the East Coast. Mm. Um, so I was I was selling bows out of there and went to a traditional event where, you know, there was 
all, all the popular failures are there at the time and just kind of popped up and didn't know my butt from a hole in the ground really. Um, but it was a great experience. I was accepted uh, by, by everyone. Um, I was labeled as unorthodox in the beginning you know, because my bows were so different. Um, everything about them was different. You know, even the, even the, the micro limb tips, uh, which everyone said was, you know, unsafe. <clears throat> and then so uh, now, all these years later, a bunch of bowyers um, have shared information and a lot of guys built bows the same. So you'll see a lot of really incredible hybrid designs out there. There's a lot of talent in the market, and I, I just love it. It's an obsession for most of us. Yeah, it sure is. So mm-hmm. what was the name of that shop there that you're talking about in Maryland that you used to sell in? That was called Autumn Sky Outfitters. Autumn Sky Outfitters. Mm-hmm. They still in business? Yeah, they are. I believe Don Cullens is still the owner. Nice. Yeah. So you, you were talking a little bit about yourself. Uh, have you always had a background in the hunting? And how, uh, how did you get started your your father your grandfather had to get started yes, in the hunting outdoors yes sir well dad dad started taking me hunting when i was about 10 squirrel hunting was the first thing we did um but i was always uh and i always had an obsession with archery even at the age of six um my mother's recently given me a picture that kind of brought back a lot of memories it was a little uh, some kind of little stick bow that i made you know, and used fish and string i used to make those a lot <laughs> fish and string for the, the string and I would sharpen the arrows from other straight sticks and river grasses that, you know, from there in Harford County on the upper, upper Bush River, the head of the Bush River where we grew up. Um, there and I would, I would try to shoot birds and rabbits. And when I was about six years old, I did shoot a rabbit with my buddy. My buddy Joey, uh, still laughs about it because, uh, I didn't know what to expect. And of course, that little tiny bow that was probably only pulling six or seven pounds, uh, <laughs> Didn't quite kill that little bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have that. And so then you'll have that. So there he was. You know, I was super petrified there down down the creek bottom behind the houses that we'd be busted. So I took that little arrow and just kept, kept jamming it in that poor little rabbit. And it squealed and squalled until it was done. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I busted out in tears and learned my first uh, lesson about ethics and uh, arrow weight. You name it. A lot was learned then. And I continued to sure. build those. Up until I kind of, I kind of got so busy when I was uh, about 20 years old, going into 21 in the restaurant business, um, and make, making making uh, strides there. That uh, I, I I wasn't able to hunt again. You know, I hunted uh, the ages of uh, 14 all the way up then till 18 or 19, and then didn't didn't again until I was about 25. Um, but but when I turned 25. The archery assessment came back again, and uh, it was, of course, you know, all the compound stuff for many years up until I did put it down as far as hunting is concerned. And quite a few years after I started building them, it wasn't until t- 2014 that I was confident enough with, with the tackle and myself uh, to hunt these big bucks that we're all after and, and just game and period, you know. So you're uh, so cool. your your first animal taken with hand and bow <laughs> was, <laughs> was was a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, little, little, little eastern cottontail, a uh, nice. little, little little baby one. <laughs> you know, even if even, even though you didn't kill it, that's a good shot for oh, being no, for being young it. like that. I, 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 what what I, I mean is with the first <laughs> shot, yeah, with the first shot, you know. Yeah, well, no, that was the other part I talked about. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean that's that's pretty cool to have a shot like that. Yeah, that young. Yeah, you know, especially something you made like that as a kid. You know, we all yeah. we all did that. Yeah, we all built bows. And yeah, but like I never that. shot anything with day. <laughs> other than my cousins. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Uh, I would actually try to shoot birds across the creek in the trees, <laughs> up in the trees like the doves yep. and the crows. I would try to shoot them in the tree across the creek, and I lost a lot of arrows. Some of them went in the neighbors' roofs. Yeah. Um. So that was back. When, <laughs> that was back when we had the aluminum arrows. Good lord. Yeah. I tell yeah. you, there's been a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, technology and you know, you know archery's came a long ways in the past just in the past 10 years archery's you. archery's came a long way since you know back when they just had the stick and you know the string but um it's just it's it's crazy i'm glad that they still 
you know, there's people out there like you that still make these recurves because I, I love the aspects of the recurve and the whole instinctive shooting thing. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's good yeah. to hear. You know, the, the, we always get excited. You know, it's good to hear about anybody that, that may consider um, traditional uh, hunting as, as part of their uh, repertoire. You know, even just to experience it one time as an experienced hunter, um, to, to have that under your belt, the feeling of uh, what it was like for our ancestors. Um, and, and, you know, we're, I think we're, you know, in, in all, you know, we know we're blessed to have the opportunity here in this, in this great country to, to hunt. Um, some people look down on traditional hunting while there's this modern tackle. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're here for a reason. That's because our ancestors did it That's right. Uh, yeah, up until recently until, you know, all this modern technology and, you know, and just how fast it's gone, even since 92, uh, has, has been amazing. And, you know, that, that was part of what drove me to want to go back to traditional and, you know, but it's the modern drive keeps us going. You know, there's always modern things. Yes. For instance, you know, the I have my new operating partner, and you know, I'm sure everyone knows I'm with Whitetail Forensics Camouflage now, and, and as an operating partner, I've designed some products uh, for for the catalog. And uh, one of you know the, the first bow we put on is is a very modern hunting rig, uh, and it happens to be of the international limb fitting origin. Um, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but that's basically, uh, you know, of course, a very respectable company when their patent come up. There were many companies in America that were ready to use international limb fitting, especially in, on hunting rigs, because men, most of the bows were for, meant for competition archery in the Olympics and so on and so forth. And so these international limb fitting, uh, you know, uh, I've designed my own hardware, you know, so Wolfball has a line of hardware that's available for other bowyers to use to build their international limb fitting rigs. Uh, and, and they can accept limbs from other companies. And so if the specs are right inside the riser, it's a toolless hardware system. Um, where the the limb bezels are also adjustable, like a compound, so you can you can relieve a little bit of weight off of these bezels uh, and change the brace height on the bow. You know how far the string is from the grip. Um, a little bit you can adjust the limbs left to right on some models of the risers because there's a lateral tiller there. Um, we happen to tap them if the customer requests uh, for a sight stabilizer bushing, and or for your camera. Uh, you know, I, mine set up with uh, an Arizona Archery Enterprises uh, two prong old school style rest, and I'm shooting solid veins from Flex Fletch. Uh, but, you know, totally equipped with uh, really nice Bow Jacks brand uh, stabilizers, uh, which, which they have a really nice string stop. Um, that's like a limb dampener and a string stop for like aggressive recurve limbs and an eye to eagle bows and so on and so forth. So, so, so for guys that are interested in uh, getting into it that may not uh, necessarily uh, trust a primitive piece of tackle like a like a self bow or even a lower poundage long bow, you know that we hope that this strikes their interest because they're incredibly fast, silent, and efficient bows, and you know you can take them apart and put them together in a matter of seconds. Nice. Um, without it, without any tools, yeah, and uh, they're short. That they're short killers is what they are. Um, so are these out? Are these out now? I haven't seen these. Yeah, I guess sir, they are. Yeah, we 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 uh, presented uh, all the, pro- the final prototypes there at the uh, Great American Outdoor Show. Uh, Tim Minnick, uh, the owner and founder of Whitetail Forensics, and I and his team, along with his son, uh, who is the designer of the three D geometrical pattern of the Whitetail Forensics uh, uh, camo scheme. Um, and so th- then after that, we've just been going to some shows. And building the bows for our sponsored members, who are team members, rep, reps, and ambassadors, uh, who have taken on a, a, a sponsorship through Wolf Fall and Whitetail Forensics um, to get these bows out there and uh, start running with them. And I can tell you that eight out of uh, ten of them uh, are all new to, just, to traditional archery. So it, it'll oh, wow. be very exciting for us and, and see them grow in, in the sport. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're going to take a break and hear a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Yes, sir. This segment of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by AMG Network Hosting, LLC, a national independent agent for most major telecommunication service providers. If your business is in need of internet, phones, credit card processing, let AMG Hosting help you compare options. 
They work with over 100 national carriers and they can help you choose the best option for your needs. Our independence means we are loyal to our customers, not a brand or a company. Call us today at 304-608-3653 or visit us at amgnhconsulting.com amgnhconsulting.com phone number again is 304-608-3653 amg network hosting llc all right guys we're back with andrew kimball with wolf paul archery so um, i believe dan's going to give us our salute to valor for this evening Absolutely. So tonight we're to salute Derek Jameson from Morgantown, West Virginia. He served in uh, served in the Navy for four years out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, and done two tours of duty in Iraq. So we just like to thank him. Thank you for your service, and we appreciate everything you've done. Going to Iraq twice is a it's a long time to be out of country. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially yeah. over there. Salute. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for your service. Uh, you know, getting back to it, you're talking about a lot of people aren't into the traditional and all that, and you got all those new guys you just talking about. You got any tips or pointers on shooting that you'd like to share for somebody that may be looking at getting into it? Sure, I can I can comment a little bit on that for y'all. I guess, uh, you know, well, I might say first off, well, as an adult, it, it can become a little more difficult to uh, to pick up instinctive shooting, and that and that be whether you're shooting three under or split finger. Um, you know that choice is there for you. Uh, as adults, we tend to work through a thought process a little bit more in our minds um, rather than picking up and going with it. And uh, as a beginner, uh, the, just need to remember first and foremost um, that that's about your form. Uh, I might suggest anyone that needs a quick good videos or two on that to check out Mr. Tom Klum, uh, who owns Rocky Mountain Specialty Gear, and he's an Olympic archery instructor here in the United States and other places. He has one of only four or five people, I believe, with his level of certification, and uh, he's a great teacher for instinctive archery. That will teach you a little bit about you know, the draw cycle and actually what we're doing there. Uh, n- next off is, uh, as, as I might relate it to, to some of you folks uh, who, who may be new to it, um, to think of a, a pitcher, a professional pitcher in baseball. You know, I think, think the boys down there at WVU. Uh, also think about billiards. You know, uh, when we're shooting a bow and arrow instinctively with no sights, you know, it's very proper to be in, in line and in form. And so if you're in line with your arrow, and your arms being in line as far as your drawing arm and elbow, you know, where that shoulder's position, as far as your shooting arm. Coming back from there, you know, there's just certain angles we need to remember. And uh, once you learn your form, you'll start to see those angles. Now, you can see a professional pitcher. He can assess a situation. He can take his eyes off a situation. But he, he's already pictured in his brain that target. He knows where his bullseye is. Yeah, and he can look away and reacquire that within a millisecond, and through form, he can put that ball where exactly where it needs to be. Uh, same goes with billiards. When we shoot, when we shoot pool, whether we're even good or not, even the average Joe can uh, pretty well take assess where one ball is as an angle, and have that spot pictured in their mind while they take their eyes off of that, and then aim on the cue ball, and then their angles come in from up and down, left and right, and their English, and so on and so forth. So when you draw a traditional bow, whether or not you're going to try to use the arrow, the point of the arrow, um, when you're shooting instinctive, you generally may not see the point of that arrow. Unless you're shooting 300 and you try to string walk a little bit and pull that arrow up under your eye. When you're shooting instinctive, you pull that arrow back, you see it. You know, you're, you're pretty well aiming. You pick out a spot on that target with your eyes, both eyes, and you don't, you don't really – take take your eyes away you know as you're coming up through your draw cycle you you can see if your tip of your arrow is centered in your lower peripheral vision with both eyes you can see if that's centered or not left and right with your target mm-hmm. generally with, with split finger that's going to the tip of the arrow as you come to full draw unless you're shooting a real long arrow the tip of the arrow then comes 
goes out of your vision. So you're then both of your eyes is, is, is and your form is basically what's putting that arrow exactly where you're looking. So if you have a clean release, you'll find that instinctive archery um, is very efficient. It's super accurate. You know, it, it's all about uh, muscle memory and form. So once you get into shooting these arrows and you have muscle memory and you have properly tuned arrows for your bow, which, which is very much different than compound. Uh, you need to have an arrow that's definitely flying like a dart. It's going to stabilize within three feet off of that shelf, whether you're shooting flat off the shelf or you know, you're shooting a rest. <clears throat> and once that happens and you have clean releases, you'll notice uh, how accurate that you can become and, and how capable you are as a human being of, of, of shooting animals even at 30 and 40 yards with, with traditional tackle. Just can't let it get to your head, boys. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. That makes that, sense. That's one of the main things is, you know, it's kind of like golf. Golf's all all about really in your head. I mean, easing your mind and just, you know. Them guys are next level. Not not getting up there <laughs> thinking about it. But, uh, I mean, it's it's 90% of your mind, I think. And uh, See, My problem with golf is after about the seventh hole, I'm seeing two balls. <laughs> that that's not the golf, Dan. <laughs> you spend balls, and yeah. yeah. You spend you too go, long. You go to church hole. four times to pray forgiveness uh, for all the cuss words that came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was too long oh, at the nineteenth hole. That's exactly right. That's funny. So you got <laughs> uh, you got an event coming up here pretty soon. Are you going to be at the beer or let's see the deer gear and beer, beer gear and beer? Yep. Yeah. Deer, beer, and gear expo. That's 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 great. Uh, thanks for asking, uh, Mr. Jeremy Critchfield, the hunt chef. He's putting on that event. That's at the Fayette County Fairgrounds there. Uh, I believe that's not too far from Morgantown. Nope. Um, up up above Uniontown there a bit. Uh, we're going to do that. I'll be representing uh, Whitetail Forensics Camo and uh, Wolf Paw Archery for the products that we have available. And I'll be looking forward to, to, to meeting everybody and. See, seeing uh, old faces and meeting new. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really good show. He's going to have some live entertainment there during the show and we're going to have some really good food, obviously. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Excuse that background noise. We got ATVs and all kinds of stuff around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're enjoying Stop the nice evening it. outside up there. It was 101 when I got in my truck this evening. Oh, man. That was rough out. It was beautiful here today. I'm telling you, 77 degrees. Are you kidding what? me? Oh my god, it was. It was. Honestly, I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of got chilly. <laughs> I kind of got chilly. I don't know where are you um, living. It got 77 degrees only. It, I'm out here in Missouri right now. Yeah. Uh, we've had, oh. Yesterday was 111 degrees. Yeah. He, oh, I see. And today, I don't know. It was overcast. The wind was blowing. That wind was. Had a little bit of nip in it. We had two weeks in the hundreds. It was mm-hmm. it was yeah, something. I'm like, man, roasting. it's been roasting everywhere. Really, super hot everywhere. Really, yeah, yeah. it has all, the, all that drought and this and that. Yeah, we've got plenty of rain coming up the coast though from that uh, tropical storm, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, Debbie. Old Debbie. Old Debbie I had two ants named Debbie. They were tropical <laughs> storms too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I had a man named Debbie. She's Did welcome. You... Her range welcome here in my yard. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Ain't Debbie and Uncle Bud? Yep. Man, had some good times at their house. <laughs> anyway, so um, tell us about uh, the white tail forensic camo, real quick. Now that's that's one of the things that caught my eye at the Morgantown show. It looks good. <laughs> um, because be it, it it's good. just it's unique yeah. and it's something that's not you know I haven't seen nothing out there like it so it kind of caught my eye there at the, at the Morgantown show and that's kind of what sparked our our conversation was the camo and then we got to talking about the bows so tell us a little bit about that I, I also like the WTF <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah well that's, that's catchy that's catchy yeah. The most interesting thing is the logo. Um, of course, you know, when most people see it, and that could be anywhere from my experience now from kids the age of seven years old up to old men that are um, 
probably 90. Yeah. Uh, as, they, as they see that, and the first comment that comes out is, of course, what you think it is. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know what to say either. I think they might need to go to church too. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, the WTF Whitetail Forensics um, is uh, an excellent camouflage. And uh, I, I first come across it myself on Facebook two years ago. And I uh, had the great opportunity of meeting the owner uh, as he was just into his uh, basically second year, two and a half years into business, I think, um, with the camouflage. Uh, it was uh, something he designed, took about a part of five years. Uh, he and his son um, did a lot of research on the science of deer vision. Um, of course, and learning so, as many people know, deer are red and green colorblind. And have usually about 20 to 100 vision. Yeah. Um, so they aren't completely colorblind and they see, uh, you know, greens as shades of yellow. Um, a lot of your reds may turn either gray or, or light color or, or something like that. Um, so they chose the particular three colors of a very light, uh, off white, kind of an antique white or Wimbledon white color. And, uh, maybe what some might call a coyote brown and your jet black colors. Um, But the actual camo pattern is really sets it apart from everything else. Combined with those color combinations and the 3D geometry uh, that Brendan Minnick uh, developed. um, Well, I tell you, it's, it's, it's definitely when you look at it, you kind of are like WTF because I, (laughs) That's what I thought on Facebook. I said, yeah. WTF is this? <laughs> and, but, then, but, then, but, but immediately right thereafter, knowing the different camouflage and everything that's on the market and everything I've worn, uh, which are most effective and why they were. Uh, when I saw this, I thought, well, it's so out of the ordinary. Yes, it is. It's definitely not, it's definitely not made for a human's eyes. Um, and and I, I've got to experience this stuff. But I think it's so, gorgeous, though, honestly. I mean, it's out of the ordinary, but it is gorgeous. Wear it. Yeah, I partnered with Tim uh, after meeting him at, the, at an event and uh, been talking to him a little while. I um, was in a business pitch, and uh, four months later, we were at the ATA. And so I've been blessed to have the opportunity to be the first person to get the licensing and uh, own the camouflage, um, be able to use it in some products and develop those for Mr. Minnick. Uh, but that I, must I, be where I've seen it at. Where's that? The ATA. Could have been ATA or could have been Harrisburg. Well, I wouldn't at that one. Uh, we was at the ATA and because I, I, I was just looking at it and I'm like, I don't remember seeing it. And then I, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, I've seen that. I don't know where, though. <laughs> yeah, it had it had to have been at the ATA. Yeah, I bet you it was. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but I tell you, boys, I mean, I, I can only encourage people to try it. Not only is it it's such a quality-made outfit, um, from a manufacturer uh, who's based here in America, um, they do do our manufacturing overseas, but they own the plant, uh, and it's great. We have good quality control, uh, very very tough fabric, which is licensed um, to us uh, and no one else. Uh, the fabric has a nice, durable water repellency finish on it, um, which, as everyone knows, you know those aren't waterproof, but they work great. I sat in a good downpour for about an hour and a half underneath a pine tree, uh, and it just poured its butt off. And after an hour and a half, yeah, my shoulders and knees, my butt started soaked through a little bit, but that should be expected. Yeah. Uh, but you know the experience with the animals, especially being a traditional hunter, you know, many of us uh, like to take shots um, 30 yards and under, you know. Yeah. Uh, up close encounters, uh, when, when I thought I was busted for movement, uh, even, even the time I was busted on scent, hundred percent busted, uh, these animals could not pick me out for one bit. Even wow. once they detected movement and that old matriarch go come in for a closer look, you know how they do it. Um, yeah. they come in and stomping and looking and shifting and blowing and, but you know, the blowing seemed to stop. I didn't get blowed or nothing like that when these animals couldn't pick me out. Hmm. They kind of, they, they gave up after a few minutes and kind of stiff legged it out of there. Yeah. Uh, so the one, the one time I did get busted, it was when my binoculars were swinging. And, uh, I, I definitely know uh, the binoculars swinging a little bit right there. Uh, cued, cued the animal in, but, uh, I was, I was blessed to, uh, have the experience of, sh- of shooting a really, really big buck. Um, one morning, um, 
this animal looked up at me four times and he was literally four yards at the base of the tree. Um, and that, and that fourth time as he looked at me and I was trying to get the am- camera situated and, uh, get it turned on. I accidentally touched my fletchings, which I didn't have veins. I actually had fletchings that made a noise yeah. and he looked up, at, he looked up at me again. I thought for sure then it's over. Um, I, you know, my opportunity would be over and, uh, he just put his head back down and grabbed another acorn, um, <laughs> and, and started munching. I, I literally stood up in the tree seat stand right there. Man. Um, and something caught his attention. He then went behind the tree and I had another shot opportunity after that, but that's, that's, that's a whole different story for no other time. But, uh, you know, it's it, kind of, it, it's kind of crazy because a lot of people think that your camouflage has to mimic the environment and, from hearing you talk about this, it's more about the actual way the deer sees the colors. Absolutely. Instead their colors. Of, instead of the, I think their pixelations are different. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're looking, they're looking for shadows and light and movement. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the reasons I don't use too many bright colors on my fletchings. Anything that's white or, you know, so, you know, like a quiver that keeps my arrows all contained within a, a small cluster uh, rather than fanned out like a like a keyboard uh, for the animals to see when I want to move my bow a little bit, preparing yeah. for the shot. Yep. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, kudos to Tim Minnick and his son, Brendan uh, Minnick, uh, for, for developing the Whitetail Forensic Scamo and, 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 and having something new for us all to uh, experience. Um, we, still, we still have the camo for a great price uh, on the website, even though we raised the price for the bundle deal. I mean, heck, you can get the whole outfit which is you know, geared around archery it's a mid-weight not quite heavyweight outfit uh, definitely for you know early season unless you're layering up but you can layer up well underneath they have great stretchability so i think for right around like 320 dollars or something 325 bucks or 30 dollars you can get a bundle with a with the uh, long sleeve polyester shirt comes with pants your jacket comes with a set of gloves uh your neck gaiter and you'll be ready to rock and roll from there. Nice. That's just a lot of great, a lot of great features in the outfit. Yeah. The, yeah, the hood zips off. The hood actually moves your head. You know, if you turn your head, you don't wind up looking into the side of your hood. There's yeah. a built-in face mask as well, uh, which yeah. you can put behind your head, or you can wear you know, with the face mask. Huh. Quite convenient. So, thank you for the uh, opportunity to talk about. Camouflage. Yeah, that's that's one of the you know we're talking about archery, but that's one of the things that I wanted to hit for sure because you know obviously you're a part of it, but it's it's so different and it's it's just something that's unique. And I'm gonna be honest with you, when I first seen it at the show, I thought he's got MC Hammer's pants here. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it it really does catch your eye, but I mean, it is a good looking outfit for sure. Well, Dave's gonna hit our salute to well, not our salute, <laughs> salute to Jesus. It's our salute to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. he's gonna talk about the word here for a little bit. Yes. All right. So our scripture of the day today is uh, it's out of ch- uh, it's out of uh, the book of Acts. It's chapter ten, verse thirty eight, and uh, this is out of the Passion. Uh, this is for Dan out of the Passion. He likes to want to read awesome. fashion. <laughs> All right. He said, so, awesome. <laughs> uh, it says, uh, Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and with great power. He did wonderful things for others and divinely healed all who were under the tyranny of the devil, for God had anointed him. And I, I just, I, I think that, you know, so many people, like, they, they want to try to blame the bad on God and, yes. you know, but but, I mean, that right there, it's, it's pretty explicit. It's like God's the one trying to do good for you. It's the devil who's the, who's doing the bad stuff. Well, you, you know, know, God wants and, us to have the best of everything. Yeah. He don't want his children lacking in anything. Yeah, right. And the world that we live in, it it portrays that God is bad. God does all these bad things. Yeah, or he, yeah. If something happens bad within your life or – you know, uh, your family. Yeah. Some people seem to look at it as, uh, why did God let this happen? Yeah. Right. Or yeah, something I, like that. You yeah. Know? You get yeah. a lot of that. Yeah, you do. And but, and I tell you something else too, Mike is they call earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, acts of God. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. 
yeah. it's, it's great. You we get a you know a, that little excerpt from Max there is very interesting because today as I worked uh, down at the job site in Deep Creek Lake, uh, I just happened to uh, move a piece of wall or whatever, and there was uh, an old book there. It was uh, you know uh, a, a lot of the whole book of Acts uh, described. You know, and so it was really interesting seeing that today. And then you wow. have uh, a, a, an excerpt for us from Acts. So that's yeah, great. That's awesome. Did you say Deep Creek Lake? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I, oh, that my, my best that's friend in college. Armenia. You don't want to go around there. And... <laughs> my, my, my best friend in college lived on Deep Creek Lake. It, it's a nice place, you know, but it, it's quite changed from when we were young. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Well, anyway, I was, I was just like, Deep Creek Lake? I've never heard anybody talk about Deep Creek Lake. Isn't that funny? That is kind of funny. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. But, yeah. It's, it's a nice area. It's a place to be. You know, I mean, a lot of shopping's down there in the southern part of the county. I'm up here in the northern part of the county where, uh, you know, most of us country people like to stay a little more secluded. Oh, I um, see. Yeah, the lake is uh, it's, it's still got, from what I hear, uh, you get in there at the right times. There's still good yellow perch, um, some good nice. slabs coming out of there. Um, haven't heard too much about any walleye or anything, anything like that. Uh, yeah. But I, I still know at times it's – Fishing is still great. So if yeah. anybody likes to ice fish, uh, sometimes we'll get a good ice over come late December. Nice. Well, Andrew, it's been great speaking with you this evening. Yes, it has. It was a pleasure having you talk about Wolf Paul Archery and the WTF camo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike and Dan, yeah, you know, we appreciate the opportunity, and uh, it was a uh, it was a great opportunity to be there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on. Yep, for sure. I wish you guys the best this hunting season. Uh, hope, to, hope to see you soon. Yep, same to you, sir. Yeah, we'll we'll sure. see you at the Hunt Chef show there in September. Oh, great. Oh, that'll be great then. Yep, we'll get well, to you talk. Yeah. You'll have to get me on some of them game calls then. You know I me. Mean? I, I love calling my bucks. I sure will. <laughs> we'll have nice plenty lady. of deer calls there for nice. sure. I'm a fair chase hunter, so I use a lot of you know calling and techniques like that. Yep. There's no bait pile anywhere near me. Definitely. Nice. There you go. All right, well, you have a good evening, and we sure appreciate you again. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen. Cheers. All right, have a good one. All right, guys. All right, guys. Be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. We're there. And uh, one thing I want to leave off for this evening is, you know, when he's talking about the word there, and, you know, there's there's going to be bad things that happen in everybody's life. You know, we're not going to walk through life or get through life without incident. You know, God says that we will fight the good fight of faith and we'll have issues. He's, he's not going to say, he doesn't say everything's going to be perfect. Right. But we have to know that he's the one in control and love is one of the major factors with that. You know, love God and all those things will work itself out. I had the scripture in my mind there and I got to talking, but it's, it uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. The scripture where he talks about that all things work to good for those oh, yeah. who love God, yeah. who are called according to His purpose, and called according to His purpose. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that's one of the scriptures that I stand on. A, yes, a lot. That's a good one, Bud. It is. Sorry to call you Bud. No, you're. That's good. a good one. Yep, it sure is. All things work together for good because when it looks like it ain't working together for good, if you can, if you can just know that. Yeah, he will turn. He will turn the negative. Yes. into something good absolutely so I love it alright guys well we appreciate you listening feel you for a little bit of word there before we go this evening <laughs> <laughs> nice like alright have a good one Dan we appreciate you brother be careful out there sure. yeah sure will guys I appreciate it All right, man. have a good evening holler at you later This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Apparition Sense, an outdoor and sporting goods company based in Dillinger, Pennsylvania. All of their scents developed and hand bottled with strict attention being paid to every detail. Contact them today at 724-998-7646 or check them out at apparitionsense.com. 100% lethal or your money back guaranteed. Get a hold of them today at 724 998 Seven six four six, or check them out at apparitionsense.com.